Greetings everybody, welcome back to the Awesome Lindsay channel. Today I am shooting swipes or smears or there's a few different names for them. It's when you have a makeup or a beauty product and you want to show the texture by kind of just smearing or swiping uh, some of the product against a background and that's what we're going to do today. But first I need to get some breakfast. All right, so here's our setup. Um, we're, for photos, it's kind of a lot of stuff, but I'm trying to do video and photo at the same time. So for photos, we're using an Nikon D610 with a macro lens. It's a 110 millimeter macro, I believe. And that's just above. And then um, I have my Einstein pointing at the ceiling and it's gonna mimic the same light this video light is doing. So it's gonna point at the ceiling, make a small dot of light, a little bit of a gradient coming out. And then that's going to reflect down onto our table on our product. But basically I'm going to try and mimic on video with this uh, video light here, the same setup I'm doing for photo. And then I also have a camera right here uh, with another macro lens. This one will be a little bit off angle, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of what's going on and what the uh, product will look like. The other thing I'd recommend getting is a set of palette knives, I believe they're called. Uh, these are from Arts Loft, Artist Loft. Uh, I can leave a link in the description to either these or something like them. But this uh, one right here in particular is a really good one to use because it's shaped in a round shape, like a finger. To me it looks more natural when you smear it across versus these sharper pointed ones. But these sharper pointed ones are great for getting products out of tubes or uh, manipulating the product down off of the tube or something like that before you um, use this thing to smear it. You can use a spatula or other pieces of cardboard or things like that I've used in the past, but these uh, palette knives are a good thing to have as well. Alrighty, so let's try our first smear. This one will probably be pretty easy because I can just squirt it right onto the canvas and call it good. Okay, I have to go down here really low. So, first shot looks really good. We're gonna do a couple more of this uh, same product and try and refine it, get a better little swipe. And another cool thing about having this sacrificial piece of uh, acrylic or whatever on, on your table is that you can move this around and better align your swipe. And another handy thing to have with you is a dry erase marker, which is why acrylic is pretty good because you can just write on the acrylic what the name of the thing you're shooting is, and that way you can stay organized. Another thing to have is uh, bleach with water. This is just a standard uh, bleach spray that I got at uh, the supermarket. I put it in this bottle because the other sprayer stopped working. So I don't know what the mixture is, but just a standard bleach spray that you find for a couple bucks at your supermarket is handy to have. Then you can spray down your white surface and it stays white. Okay, so we've done three products. What I'm gonna do now is take you into Photoshop, show you how to cut them out, and then put them on their own white background or make a PNG or a transparent background. And that way you can hand them off to a client and they have just the swipe or the smear by themselves and they can put that onto a brochure or a website or wherever they want. Okay guys, so what I do after I get it into Lightroom is I I've shot a white card, so I'm just gonna white balance to this here. 
and then I'm going to come over here, hold down shift, and then sync all of these. Uh, I'm just going to keep all these checked because I haven't done anything to the other photos, so it won't even matter. Okay, so I'll just go through one of these. I like this one quite a bit, so what I normally do is I'll come into lens correction and make sure all that's on. I shot it with a macro lens, so generally you won't have too much distortion or anything. And then I'm going to move this exposure up a tiny bit so that the uh, histogram comes over to the right a tiny bit. And that looks good. And why I'm doing that is because I'm going to put this swipe on a solid white background. And if I don't bring up the highlights a little bit, it'll look kind of gray. And I'm going to tweak that a little bit more in Photoshop once I get into there, which I'm actually going to do real quick and bring back up the raw dialog. And I'm going to bring down the blacks a tiny bit. Bring up the clarity a tiny bit. And then that, let me go into uh, the curve. Bring the shadows down. Usually that doesn't have a lot of effect on it. So bring the darks down a little bit. And then I can start seeing some of the uh, contrast come back in, which is what I want to show off that texture. Okay, and then I'm gonna duplicate this layer because I always do, which is kind of a force of habit. And then the way I cut these out is I use the pen tool and I zoom in really close. Then I come in a few pixels from the edge. With this one, there's no real discernible edge. It's kind of a goopy blob. I can kind of go really quick and not have to be super precise. And I'm gonna speed through this real fast for all you guys. And then as you know, once you get to the end point, your uh, icon will change to a circle. And you click on that and it'll close your path. And what I do then is right click and I do make selection and I have my selection at feather radius 0.07 pixels, which generally works well for everything. And like I've mentioned in other videos, generally this will uh, depend on size and resolution of your image, but I found 0.07 works great for me pretty much all the time. So once I've done that, I just come down here to the layer mask icon, click on that, and I've got a selection and I'm gonna push C to crop this in just to give it a little bit of a square shape, kind of center it up there and hit enter. And then I'm gonna go down here to this icon, I don't even know what it's called, but I'm gonna create a solid color layer and you can move up to wide or just push F six times on your keyboard, hit enter and move this thing below here and then hit V to accept that crop. And now you can see that this is still a little bit um, grayish. So what I'm going to do is come into my adjustment layers here and grab a levels layer. And I'm going to command option G and uh, just clip this to that mask. Not like it really matters, but just kind of a good practice to get into just to, in case you have something below. That means this layer will only affect the layer that's directly below it and nothing else. So, and what I'm going to do is take this white picker tool. I'm going to zoom in here and find kind of the whitest part of the image, something that should be white, and click on that. And then that lightens it up quite a bit, and it makes it look like it was meant to be on a bright white background. And then what I'm gonna do here is go into the layer and double click on this, and it'll bring up my layer styles. And I'm gonna add a drop shadow and this one, I've kind of already got these set, but I'll kind of go through them real fast. This one is just a really thin shadow here. It's kind of the contact shadow, I've heard it called. So I'm going to bring this thing in really, really close. Bring the size in really close. Bring up the opacity a little bit. Bring the distance back down again to two pixels. And then I'm going to go down to this other one. If you only have one here, just click the plus button. It'll create you another one identical. So then you'll have to kind of uh, go through and tweak this one. And what I'm going to do is bring this back down a little bit. Bring this opacity down. And then bring the size in a tiny bit. So this is the sh a similar shadow that we would have if we had taken this directly on white. And you can see the before and after. Just kind of makes it look like it was really sitting there. So, and then what you can do, 
as now you can save this as a PSD file and then whoever gets this file can then turn off the layer and they can take this swipe layer and post it on something. You can also push Command, Option, Shift, and S and that'll bring a Save As dialog box and you can save this as a JPEG or you can save it as a PNG and if you save it as a PNG, it gives you the one file, not a whole layered file. And this is easy to send over email or something. But this one will then have your transparent background. And that way the person can just take the one PNG file, put it onto a, a flyer or a website or something like that. So that's how I cut them out and then get these things ready to deliver after I've shot the swipes. All right, you guys, hopefully that was informative or entertaining, one of the two, maybe both. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.